As film analysts and potentially even one day filmmakers, one of the first things that we need to start to understand is that the camera is a toolbox full of different techniques and tricks that we can do to help us make meaning. That's why it's one of the first things I teach any of my media classes. How to identify a camera shot very specifically and work out why it was chosen. It's how we know this character is deceitful. <laughs> Low key. This character is angry. This guy is badass. I am Iron Man. So the first step then is to learn the names of every single tool in this camera work toolkit. So in this video, I'm going to be using the complete Marvel catalog to outline every single shot type that filmmakers can use. Before we begin, if you're new here and you like the content, perhaps if you're a film student or a media student, consider subscribing to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. So let's start as far away from the subject as possible with the wide shot. The main purpose of this shot is to provide context, showing our subject within their surroundings so that the audience can get their bearings as a scene plays out. For this reason, the wide shot is often associated with establishing shots at the start of a scene, but as you'll see with all of the shots in this video, that's not its only purpose. It can also be used like this in Spider-Man Homecoming to show the physical and emotional space between two characters who aren't seeing eye to eye. Previously on Peter Screws the Pooch, I tell you to stay away from this. Or like they do a few times in this scene from Endgame to juxtapose something huge with an individual character to show the overwhelming odds that they face. Next, we move in a little bit closer and we get the full shot. We're closing in now and we can see all of our subject within their context without any cropping. This is useful when we need to see more than one subject in the frame or when the environment provides some of the visual information being relayed. If we look at one of the funniest moments from the entire MCU catalogue, we can see how the punchline is actually reliant on the full shot. But I will not be bullied by that. Now if we pull in a little bit closer, we have the medium full shot. And this is where we start to single out a particular character in the frame that we want the audience to focus on. Something that is harder to do in a full or a wide shot. One of the best examples we can look at is the prison break scene in Guardians of the Galaxy, where the mid-long shot framing means that we are directed to look at the center of the frame, because the two main subjects are looking at each other, and in doing so, we can't help but notice Groot take the initiative, starting the escape in the background. Once we have it, we gotta move quickly, so you definitely need to get that last. So here we still have environmental information, but we're far more focused on the people within it. Next, we have the previously mentioned cowboy shot, which to all intensive purposes is the same as a medium long shot, but frames the subject to just below the hips. Think of where you would have to frame a shot to include a cowboy's holster and you get the idea. This is a very strong, powerful shot, which is often reserved for heroic poses. In Marvel films, it's probably best seen everywhere. Now we get to the biggie, or the midi, technically, the medium shot. It's probably the most common shot you'll see in film. And I've been thinking a lot about why this is, and I think I've got an answer. The medium shot frames the subject from waist to the top of the head, very often in a 30 to 50 mil lens, which when you think about it is very similar to how we experience interactions with people in the real world. It's close enough to be able to read lots of information on the person we're looking at, but not so close to be uncomfortable. For this reason, it's the go-to shot for dialogue scenes like this. I did listen, kid. Who do you think called the FBI, huh? It's also why I choose to film these videos in a medium shot. It's not intimidating, it's not too close, it's comfortable. Move in a little bit closer, and we've got the medium close up. This typically frames the shoulders and face of the subject, and I don't know if you've noticed, but each time we move in, we are being directed more and more to look at a specific part of the frame. So with this shot, we can see far more information on the characters' faces, such as the clear, unimpressed look on Valkyrie's face. That I want to be on the team. Has it got a name? It's, yeah, it's called it's the Re Re Revengers. The Revengers? One step closer and we have the close-up which shows the whole subject's head. I can't really think of a better scene to demonstrate this than my favorite clip from Captain America, Winter Soldier. The use of the close-up in the moments leading up to the claustrophobic lift fight do two things. First, we know something's not right because of the information we're getting from Captain's face. Something only achieved by restricting the view of everything else other than this. 
Furthermore, it already establishes the close quarters claustrophobic setting in preparation for the fight scene itself. And finally, we come to the extreme close-up, which is when we abstract the close-up and get really up close and personal. This can be to show intimacy, like this kiss scene from Thor, or the compactness of being in Iron Man's suit like this. Me? Or to make sure that the audience doesn't miss a really important detail like this. Needless to say, you're probably gonna see an extreme close-up reserved for moments of intense emotion. So there you have it. That is the terminology that you need to learn to describe almost any shot in any film. There's only really those few. Now notice that I've not really talked about camera movements and composition. I'll save those for another video. But learning to speak this lingo is vital if you're going to become a film analyst or you want to describe how you want a shot to look to your DP. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you left a, a like and subscribed if you haven't already. If you're looking for where to go next, I'd recommend checking out my video on how to read cinematography, which you can watch here. Or if you're interested in how specific filmmakers use the camera uniquely, check out my video on auteur theory right here. Until next time.